So, first of all, we're going to be focusing today on graphing, graphing on an XY chart the sine function. Next time we'll do cosine, and then the third lesson will be shifting those functions. So, first of all, today is learning a ton of new wording and information, and you've got to understand what it is and what things mean. So, first of all, your notes packet, I will be kind of all over the place with that notes packet. So, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Because, hey, everybody, so on the inner circle, we have a bunch of x, y points here. So, at these thetas, at these zero, at pi six, at pi fours, at three, at pi thirds, at pi halves, and so on. As we go around this unit circle, we have x, y points. So, that is sine and cosine. Because remember, cosine x, sine is the y value. So notice I've highlighted the y value because today we're focusing in on sine or the y value. So what we're doing is we're looking at the function y is equal to sine of theta. You can see it written like that or like this. Same thing. Y is equal to sine of x. Sine of theta, same thing, everybody. Okay? So now we can graph the sine function as we go around in radians or degrees. We are going to do radians. Um, however, you could do degrees. We're going to be using radians. Now, we can literally plot, we're just going to be plotting x, y points as we go around the unit circle, really easy stuff, as long as we know our unit circle. So, notice I've highlighted some values, and the reason I've highlighted these is because these are what are called pretty values, or exact answers, like where it's easy to graph whole numbers. Wouldn't we rather just graph whole numbers? So, everybody look, at zero, I'm at zero. At pi halves, I'm up at one. Do you see how those are easy points to plot? At pi, we're at zero, back down to zero. Then at three pi halves, we're down at negative one, and then we're back to the beginning. At two pi, we're back to zero. So we're just going to be plotting x, y points, pretty easy stuff. So here we go. Flip to the next page or wherever. Find the same thing on your notes. So they have theta comma y, which is the same thing as x comma y. So they always put this as the theta axis, theta or x, same thing. Once again, we're just going around the unit circle, but instead of having it on the unit circle, we're putting it on an x, y chart here. So let's write down these x, y points. At zero radians, we're at zero. So put that point, zero. Then look, at pi halves, we're up at one. So I'm just filling it in. Then at pi, we're at zero, right, everybody? Then at three pi halves, we're down at negative one, and then we're back up to the beginning at two pi, we're then at zero. Now we've just completed what's called one full cycle for sine. How do I know? Because now I'm about to repeat. If I want to go again, I can, but it would just repeat. That same pattern would repeat everybody, right? Think about going again. The next thing that's going to happen is one. Then the next thing that's going to happen is zero. The next thing would be negative one again, and then back up to zero. So that's a repeating pattern that happens for sine. So let's go through on our x, y chart. We went around the unit circle twice, so we completed two full cycles. We can do as many as we want. We're just trying to show you a couple. So let's go, let's graph this over zero, right here zero, over zero of zero. We just graphed that. Now go over pi halves up to one. Now go over pi, back down to zero. Go over to 3 pi halves, down at negative 1. Go over to 2 pi, and then we're up at 0. I'm going to stop right there. After this, we repeated. So that's our first cycle. So let's connect those dots. It's a nice round curve. It's called actually a sinusoidal wave. This is a wave, a nice round curve. So let's answer. We can now continue. I'm going to change colors. You don't have another color. So I don't want you to graph this next piece yet. So we were at zero, then the pattern's just going to repeat. I could use this, but also I could just know this pattern's going to repeat. So wasn't it zero, then one, right? What's zero, one, zero, min, zero, correct? So I want you to notice something for sign. So just look at this pink cycle here. If you turn your head sideways, turn your head sideways, do you see how it looks like a sideways S? That's a little trick I use. So sine is S, so it looks like a sideways S. So a cycle for sine is always this pattern. Zero, max, zero, min, zero, creating our S. That's really important to understand. Okay, so right here, let's answer the questions right here. It says the graph of the sine function is called a sine curve. It's a nice round curve. 
Why do we call this periodic? Periodic means repeat pattern in the exact same fashion. So it's not going to change. It's going to look the exact same from period to period to period. So it wouldn't be like this and then stretched and quick. Does that make sense? It's going to be perfectly symmetric. So we would do a period, that same exact perfect symmetric, like distance would happen and continuing. We could go forever. Does everybody see what I'm saying? We can continue around that unit circle as many times as we want. So now go ahead and fill in the rest of these dots here like we just did on yours. And so how we've drawn it is actually deceiving. We put dots, but really they're arrows because this continues forever. Because think about it. We could go around the unit circle once. There's our first period. We could go twice, second period, third period, fourth period. We could literally go around the unit circle all day. This wave would continue. So with that in mind, let's say I went around the unit circle again. Where would I end on the x-axis? Yes, um, where would, what would our x-axis be at, at zero? It would be 6 pi. 2, 4, 6. Correct. Does everybody see how it's just continuing onward and onward? So now I also could go around the unit circle backwards. Everybody think about it. I would go 0, then we'd be at negative 1, right? We could go backwards. So this pattern actually repeats backwards as well. So it goes on forever. So our domain is negative infinity to infinity. Or all real numbers, because a sinusoidal wave is literally continuing forever. However, our range, because the unit circle is a radius of one, that's a distance of one, our highest value will be up at one, which makes sense. Look, the highest point is one, and our lowest point, because of the radius being one, was negative one. So our range is bouncing between negative one and one. I wrote that backwards, didn't I? It's fine. So then. <clears throat> With that being said, you would also put brackets because it lands right on negative 1 and 1. So it says, why do we call this periodic? Periodic means repeats the same pattern over and over. So it's repeating a pattern. And it's symmetric. The distances will be the same. Okay, so it says right here, what is the horizontal distance it takes, in this example for sine, to complete one cycle? Now remember, one cycle for sine is zero max, zero min, zero. That's what a cycle is. Cycle is when it repeats. So what's the distance from here to here? Two pi. So it says, what's the horizontal distance? You would say zero to two pi. Therefore, our distance is two pi. Our period, the length of one cycle, is two pi. So the word period means length of one cycle before you repeat. So everybody, period, right here, is, it tells you the horizontal distance. You're going to hear me say length of one cycle. Now, remember, a cycle means zero max zero min zero, if you want to draw that in. So length of one of those patterns. It says, what is the distance between the highest and lowest points? So our lowest point is at negative one. Our highest point is at one, everybody. So what's that distance? Two. Okay, good to know. Then right here it says the amplitude is half of the distance between the highest and lowest points. So everybody, let's, that's kind of making it harder than it needs to be. Midline is the halfway mark that would split this and this evenly. You see how that would be right here at zero. That splits this evenly up here. Amplitude means distance from the midline. So how high up did I have to go? One. So my amplitude is literally one. Amplitude means distance. From midline. If it's been shifted, yes, but so then your midline would just be shifted up. <coughs> so amplitude, yeah, so it, but it's going to be spread evenly. That just would mean if it was up at four and down at negative two, your midline has been shifted up. So now, everybody, this is really important to understand. It is down one. Amplitude is just distance. It's never negative. Amplitude means distance from midline. So you have down one and up one, so the amplitude is one. Don't worry about frequency. Midline is the half wave. We just talked about midline. So the equation for this one's midline is y equals zero. Notice. And then it says the five-point pattern is. That means on the x-axis for sine, what are the five points that we would plot? So everybody, why, why is it five? Because we have zero, max, zero, min, zero, right? Think about the unit circle as you go around. Isn't there four quadrants? 
and you're back to zero. So that counts as our fifth one. Does that make sense? So really, this is just helping us remember, you're gonna hear me say, put in four tick marks. So here's why it's just four tick marks, because we start at zero. So then over one, two, three, four, do you see how that completes one cycle? You're gonna hear me say, put in your four tick marks. That would be your five points. So let's write down what that is. You will, to remember this, picture yourself going around the unit circle. So zero, then around the unit circle, the next thing we would hit is pi halves. The next thing we would hit going around the unit circle is pi, right? Look, I'm going around, pi halves, pi. What comes after that? Three pi halves, right? Going around the unit circle, and then we're back up to two pi. And that's the period, the length. And then we start repeating. We could go again, but that's all it asks us. The five points, which would be one, two, three, four tick marks. Okay, so we really write down this equation somewhere on your paper for yourself. Now, we have to look at an equation for sine and know what each thing stands for. This gives us all the information we need about the sine function. So A sine of B theta. A is the amplitude or distance from midline. So A is the amplitude. So if that was a two, now instead of going up one and down one, we'd go up two, down two. Yeah, the stretch, just like with all of our other functions. Yeah, it stretches it out. So now our amplitude would be up to, down to, if we put it to there. Now here's what you really, really got to get in your head, is what B is and what period is. So B is, by definition, the number of cycles between 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to say that again, write it down. B is the number of cycles from 0 to 2 pi. Now remember this, a cycle for sine is zero, max, zero, min, zero. So if B is one, that means there was only one of those zero, max, zero, min, zeros from zero to two pi. So let's say I gave you this, sine of two theta. That literally means there are two cycles from zero to two pi. So if we were to graph this, it would look like this, zero, max, zero, min, zero. We've got to go one more. There's two of them. Does that make sense? So i got to go again. Zero, max, zero, min, zero. So this, now there's two of those from zero to two pi. Does that make sense? Instead of just one. So if I put a three, if I put a three right here, there'll be three of those from zero to two pi. It's getting squished in more. They're fitting more in. Does that make sense? Now here is what period means. You've got to know what period means. Period means the physical length of just one. Not, not all, but just one cycle. Now remember, cycle means zero max zero min zero. Zero max zero min zero. So period means length of just one of those. Physical length of just one of those. So you can use this formula. Period is always going to be 2 pi divided by b. <clears throat> so let's look back at this one. Didn't we say that there was two 0 max 0 min zeros between 0 and 2 pi? So if I said to you, what is the length of just one cycle, just one of those, what would you say? 0 to 2 pi. So what's one of them? Pi, everybody, isn't halfway going to be pi, right? Before I repeat. So how could we have found that using this formula instead? 2 pi divided by b. b is 2. So we would get pi. 0 max 0 min 0 is a distance of pi. Does everybody see? You've got to be able to see it always. That's why I'm showing you how it all clicks together. So don't. this is what people mistake. They mistake what b is. B is the number of cycles from 0 to 2 pi, and then they mistake it with period. We do use B to find our period, and then we could use our period to find B. It just depends. Okay, let's answer some questions here. Let's start using it. That's honestly everything. But now it's just like putting it all together and graphing and understanding how it works. We're working it from the inside out. Here we go. It says, this is on your note packet, find the period and amplitude of each sign graph. So they gave us the equation, so we could use the equation, or we could use the graphing picture. So on this one, we're going to use the picture more so, and then we'll connect it with our equation. So let's find our amplitude. So amplitude means distance from the midline. 
sorry, amplitude. So everybody locate the midway distance. Isn't that right here? Isn't that up and down the same amount? So what's my amplitude? One. Okay, good. Now, that makes sense. Look right here in front of sign. There was a one. Let's make the connection. Do you see it? You can find it using the picture or the equation. We just said that we, I just gave you what the equation looked like. Now it says, find the period. Find our period. So you have to remember, period means length, length of just one cycle. I always write that down for myself, so I don't forget what that means. So let's look and see, where does one cycle end? Zero, max, zero, min, zero. Where did it end? High half. So our period would be high half. Yep, so then you would do it the way I'm about to show you in just a second. So let's pretend like we were not able to see where it land. What if it didn't land in a perfect spot? Like what if it landed in the middle? It's going to be a little bit harder to think about. So let me show you another way. You've got to be able to do both. Another way to think of it. First of all, do you see how right here we know that our B value equals 4? So we could go off to the side and say period is equal to 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi halves. Do you see how I got it from the equation? Same thing. Now, let's pretend, well, you'll see in just a second. We're going to get there, I promise, because I know exactly what you're asking. Okay. All right, let's do another one. So you guys answer this one. Find the period and amplitude of each sine graph. Okay, what's my amplitude? What's my period? Just curious, are you using the graph or the equation? The graph, okay. So right now I want you to focus on the graph. Zero, max, zero, min, zero. There was one cycle from zero to two pi. So, and the length of that was 2 pi. So that's why our period is 2 pi. Everybody good with that? Now here is the thing. I didn't say this and I want to go back to this. Hey, it's not all of our graphs are always going to be so easy, like so easy to use. So let's say we just had this graph and I asked you to find B. Let's say I asked you to find B. Do you see how we can look and see how many cycles are from 0 to 2 pi to find B? If I said, so let's do it. We went 0 max 0 min 0. So then 0 max 0 min Zero. There's our second. Are we at 2 pi yet? Zero. Max. Zero. Min. Zero. Are we at 2 pi? Not yet. Almost. Zero. Max. Zero. Min. Zero. How many colors? Four. four. Correct? So there are four cycles from zero to 2 pi. So that's how we're able to get four right there. Does everybody see? We have to be able to work backwards. Now here's the thing though, this is not, this was pretty obvious. So what if I cut it off, because they're not always gonna make this obvious. You can see two pi and it lands right on two pi. What if something weird happens? Like what if I literally cut the graph off there? Do you see how you can't see up to two pi? If you can't see all this stuff, everybody. If I cut it off there, if I said to you what's B, you have to kind of think. So let me show you how you should be able to work backwards. You have to be able to do this. So what you would do if I said to you what's B, you would say, or write the equation. You'd say, I need B. So what's our period? We can see one period. Zero max, zero min zero. What's the period? Pi halves. So you'd go off to the side and say, well, my period is 2 pi over B. I don't know what B is because I can't see the 2 pi, but I do know my period is pi halves. So what you would do is then put in what you know. Your period is pi halves. I'm going to just erase this to give myself some room to write. Our period is pi halves, so you'd say, okay, so one length of one cycle is pi halves. So we have pi halves is equal to 2 pi over b. Now let's solve for b, just using algebra. So what would I do to get b alone? Okay, times by b, times by 2, guys. It's algebra, times by 2. Do you get why I'm doing this? So now I have this. b pi is equal to 4 pi. Divide by pi. Therefore, b is equal to 4. So you can find it all these different ways based on what you know. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, cool. 
All right, continuing. So now go ahead and answer these two. It says find the period and amplitude. Now it just gives you an equation. So now it's testing. Do you know the, the formulas? Ready, go. It's on in class. Okay, what's my amplitude on C? My period is 2 pi thirds, right? 2 pi divided by B. So that means, that means if we were going to graph this, everybody, if we were, and we're not, we go 1 and negative 1, like this, then remember, a cycle for sine is 0 max 0 min 0, correct? So we would need 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks, right? Like I said, so I'd go over 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks. We just said the period ended at 2 pi thirds. So that would be 2 pi thirds right there. And then we would do 0, max, 0, min, 0. Didn't we end at the period is that length? Everybody good? Did you see how that was pretty easy? Okay. So what's my amplitude here? And then my period is? Which is? Pi thirds. If we were going to graph this, we'd go up one, two, three, four, five, down one, two, three, four, five. And then we'd go like this, one, two, three, four, and that would be at pi thirds, right? Then zero, max, zero, min, zero, and da-dink. So not super hard if you can just connect the dots. All right, so this is all our information. And let's just practice graphing this. So here we go. Um, there's Find a blank spot on your notes. There's like blank pages, like on the front page. Here we go. Draw in. Write this equation in. Understanding how to graph it will help you work backwards. You've got to be able to do that. This is what I'm, how I'm going to ask it on the test. I'm going to say graph this, and I want us to graph two cycles. So what you're going to do is go in and list out your amplitude, your B value, and your period. And then you can just start graphing. That's why it, just a second ago they had you list them out. So let's list out our amplitude. Two, correct? Everybody good? Amplitude is two. Period is. No, no, no. I'm gonna, before I do period, I'm going to go like this. B, which means number of cycles from 0 to 2 pi. What's B? 2. So now we can say our period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. B is 2. So that is pi. We have enough information to graph it. So this is what you would do. X, you make an XY chart, XY. Now we have to graph two cycles. So let's go over. Now remember, a cycle for sine is 0 max 0 min 0. That's four tick marks. So let's start here. So over 1, 2, 3, 4. You just said that period was a distance of what? Pi. That's what a period means. The length of one cycle. So if I asked you to graph 2, then you're going to have to go another 1. You're repeating. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four tick marks. Where would that put me now? Two pi, because that's a distance of pi. That same distance will be another pi, so that's two pi. Now, here is required of you. I did not do this a second ago. It is required for you to then fill in every single tick mark. So what you're going to do, though, is make it easier. Don't overthink it. It's a distance. This is literally a physical distance. So just think of the halfway distance. What's the halfway distance between zero and pi? Pi halves. So didn't you just take the distance and times it by a half or divide it by two? Same thing as times it by a half, right? So what's the halfway distance between zero and pi halves? Times it by a half, everybody. Pi halves times by a half because that would be dividing it by two, which is pi fours. Now watch, this part always confuses people. I'm trying to help it make you fill it in way quicker. These are distances, and they're equal distances. So here's one pi fourths. So go ahead then, 2 pi fours. This would be 3 pi fours. Now look, 4 pi fours ends up in the right spot, right? Continuing, 5 pi fours. Now 6 pi fours is 3 pi halves. 
So that was six pi fours. So this must be seven pi fours. And then look, eight pi fours is two pi. So we can check. Now we're almost done. Our amplitude is two down two. And then we say, all right, we're just going to go through our sign pattern. Zero, next tick mark. Max, right? Zero, next tick mark, min. Zero, creating our S. There's our first cycle. Let's continue. Zero, max, zero, min, zero. I guess. If we were asking you to graph it by yourself by hand, you would say my amplitude is 3, B is 4, which means there are 4 cycles from 0 to 2 pi. Our period is 2 pi divided by B, so I did 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi halves, right? Yes. So the first thing you do is go over 1, 2, 3, 4, that's pi halves. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, pi halves plus pi halves is 2 pi halves, which is? Pi, right, everybody? The halfway distance right here would be times that by a half, so that'd be pi fours, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it times this in half, that would be pi eights, everybody. Pi fours times a half, are we good? Now think in distances to make your life easier. One pi eights, two pi eights, so that's three pi eights. Look, four pi eights, five pi eights. Six pi eights. 7 pi 8, and now I filled in my x-axis, and then you'd see my amplitude is, I literally could just go 3 and negative 3. It's all about the labeling, you know? And then I would go, okay, sine is 0, max, 0, min, 0. 0, max, 0, min, 0. I'm just asking you to draw in two cycles. All good. Okay, How, do you write this one down? So, negative 2, sine of 2 thirds x. There's a negative in front. Now, this does not affect your amplitude. However, that is a reflection across the x-axis, a reflection over the x-axis. So, we'll go through and graph this, and then you'll see it's actually very similar. Oh, you're making, Braden make, just made a great connection. Instead of going zero max, zero min, zero, it's going to go down first. Zero min, zero max, zero. True. So our amplitude is still just positive two. The negative is a reflection over the x-axis. Our B is two thirds. There's only two thirds of a cycle from zero to two pi, not even a full cycle. Our period is 2 pi divided by 2 thirds. Guys, do this correctly. Do algebra correctly. So go like this. 2 pi divided by 1 divided by 2 thirds. So dividing fractions is easy as pi. Flip the second and multiply. So all my 2's divide out. So we would get 3 pi. Perfect. So let's go ahead and put in our x-axis. I'm asking you once again to graph two cycles. So over 1, 2, 3, 4 puts me at... Three pi is in period the length of one. Zero max, zero min, zero, everybody. So over one, two, three, four would put me at six pi. The halfway distance, take that and times it by one half. Three pi halves. Does everybody see how I'm doing that? Then times that by a half. That'd be three pi fours. This one gets people because this is the first time we haven't just had it be in like increments of one. 1 pi force, that's not how this one's working. This one's going in threes. 3 pi force. So then this would be 6 pi force. Do you get why I'm going in threes now? Because there's a 3 on top. 3, 6, 9. So 9 pi force. 3, 6, 9, 12 pi force, which is 3 pi, so we're doing good. Where was I? 12. 15 pi force. 16, 17, 18 pi force. Good. Thank you. 
And then 18, 19, 20, 21. Is it? Okay. 21 pi half. And that doesn't simplify. Yeah, and then 20, yeah, because then we're good. 24 pi half. Wait, what did I mess up on? Oh, that's why we're having issues. I changed to halves on accident, didn't I? So it was 9 pi halves. Right, so it was 9 pi halves, but then I have to go back to 4s. And then we're good. Okay, cool. So now you would say my amplitude is up to units, down to units. Now, like Braden said, this one is reflected. So your zeros will stay the same. Zero, instead of being max, it's got to be reflected. So that puts it down first. Yeah, just go down. Zero min, zero, max, zero. Dudding. Zero, min, zero, max, zero. And da dink da dink. Okay, cool. Draw your arrows. Pretty easy, right? Okay, this is my last one, and then on um, this, because this one throws people off the first time they see it. I tried to let second hour do it. I'm like, okay, dry it, and then they were all like crickets. So this is my last one of graphing. Then we'll just make sure we're good, and then I'm going to let you literally finish the worksheet. So let's go through it. Our amplitude is still just one. There is a reflection over the x, so you should do it like this. Reflection over x. Our B value is pi. This is weird, but we are gonna. it is what it is. So there are 3.14 cycles from 0 to 2 pi. It's a little off, but just keep going. Our period is 2 pi divided by B. Isn't B pi? So it would be 2. Just go with it. It's fine. The pi is divided out, which is rare and happens sometimes, which is fine. The same thing happens. You'll go over 1, 2, 3, 4. That will be at 2. Everybody see it's still a cycle, it's still a length of a cycle, it's no different. Over one, two, three, four puts me at four, correct? The halfway distance would be one, wouldn't it? So then the halfway distance would be a half. So look, one half, two half, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, six halves, and then seven halves, and then eight halves. We've ended in the right spot. Our amplitude is one. And then just careful, we're going to go down first because of the negative. Filling in the x-axis is always the hard part for people. Yeah. Yes, and you'd always keep the amplitude positive. So zero min, zero, max, zero. Zero min, zero, max, zero. My sinusoidal wave. Sinusoidal. Yeah. Soidal. Yeah. I'll spell it out for you sometime. Okay, cool. Let's now let's make the connection right here, and this is gonna be like the homework ones. Let's make the connection now going backwards. It says find the equation of each sine graph. So now we have to go through, we say, okay, the equation is this for sine, a sine of b theta, and remember what each thing means. So look right here, I have what each thing means. So you're going to use, just depending on the graph, any any of this information to figure out what A and B is. So first of all, the first thing you do is find out your amplitude. Draw your midline in, and how high up did we go? Four. So we can literally go Y is equal to four, sine of, now B means number of cycles from zero to two pi. Can we see two pi on here? Does it land in a perfect spot? Right at two pi. Yes. So we can just count. On this one. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's see how many cycles took place. Zero max, zero min, zero. There's our first one. Zero max, zero min, zero. There was two, therefore it's two theta. B is number of cycles from zero to two pi. Is everybody good? What does B mean? Number of cycles from zero to two pi. And there was two, so we just put it right in. Here's the other way of doing it, though. What if I, once again, cut it off right here, the graph? You wouldn't be able to locate 2 pi, so you would have done it like this. Watch, you're going to have to on the homework. You say, well, what's, the, my, what's my period? Just what's one, the length of one cycle? Where did it end? At pi. So you say, well, period is equal to 2 pi over b. I know my period's pi. So we have pi is equal to 2 pi over b. Solve for b. What would we do? Times b, guys. Times B. 
So we would have v pi equals 2 pi, then what would you do? Divide by pi. So that's another way of getting it. You see how I got 2? The pi's divide out? Okay, whatever way will work. Okay, here we go. Let's do another one. This is on your, on your notes if you're wanting to be doing it for your own sake. If not, you can just watch. So you'd say, okay, what's my amplitude? Aha, aha, sign of, what's B? Can we locate 2 pi? Right there. And how many of those? 1, 0 max, 0 min, 0. So you'd say theta or x. 1 theta, 1. Okay, good. Now watch out, because if it goes down first, we got to put a negative. And we're almost there. I'm almost about to let you go, but you just want to see a couple more. So my amplitude is 1, and didn't it go down? Negative 1, right? We don't have to put the 1, but I'm just doing it for fun. And how many cycles? From 0 to 2 pi. 1. So just theta, right? Easy peasy. Okay, so really, guys, you should be able to finish up the worksheet and hand it in, hopefully. So these will be how you do the bottom two, 13 and 14. Why? Just because on the test, I'm most likely, if you try to do it on their XY chart, you'll see that it doesn't match up. It's a little off, so it makes it harder. It's honestly easier to do it by yourself if you know what you're doing. So if I told you the amplitude is 3, the period is 4 pi, aren't I good to go? So I would go, my amplitude is up at 3, down at negative 3. Over 1, 2, 3, 4 would be at 4 pi. I'm going to ask you to graph two cycles on the test, so let's practice it that way. 1, 2, 3, 4 is 8 pi. Cut it in half would be 2 pi. Cut it in half would be pi. 1, 2, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi. And then you guys, sine is 0 max, 0 min, 0. 0 max. Zero, min, zero. Zero, max. Zero, min, zero. I didn't draw that very good, but. The power. Okay. So I think you guys get the picture. So look at this one. This will be my last example of the day. So if I said to you, graph this, you would do it by yourself. You'd say, okay, my amplitude is three. My period is 2 pi divided by b. Isn't b pi halves, everybody? So 2 pi divided by pi halves. Careful. That's 2 pi over 1. And then flip the second. So now 2 is on top, pi is on bottom. So my pi's divide out. So we get 4, which is fine. We go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and it happens to be at 4. Over 1, 2, 3, 4 happens to be at 8. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up three, down three, and then we literally go zero, max, zero, min, zero. Zero, max, zero, min, zero. Okay, finish the worksheet. If you can get it done in the next five minutes, you can hand it in. If not, you'll go do some homework. If you need to watch the video, do. Watch the video.